Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is about long-weighted Joe Stewart review. Why it took this long is because of its price line. I find some of the items are very, very expensive. It's like touch the luxury brand's pricing. So it take me a longer time to really make my mind up. It needs to worth its price line. You don't want to miss today's video. Uh, okay, start from the primer. As you can tell, this is a sample. I was going to buy the full size primer in <laughs> exactly the same one. Then this sample arrived when I bought their lipsticks. So perfect, hey? The primer itself, there are, in my mind, pros and cons. Let's talk about things I like first. The formulation, the experience of using it is really, really nice. The product itself is literally like light yogurt, light cream, very, very lightweight and hydrate. You can see the color straight away. It's like light lavender color. Oh, forgot to tell you guys the full name. It's called Illuminating Searing primer as we can tell from the name and the color itself it's supposed to hydrate and give you a glow finish and also to balance in the yellowness from your skin tone itself in terms of hydrating yes this one does hydrate your skin but in terms of lasting it's very very average in terms of illuminating and give you a glow yes this one does give you that reflection when you apply on the face, you clearly see the glow reflecting on one side and compared to the other side, which I didn't apply. However, it has like odd, weird silver reflection. So make the whole face finish look very, very odd. There is no additional function for this. You only can use this as a primer and you have to use foundation or colored powder to put on top of it to really reduce the silverness or to cover it itself otherwise it looks very very weird um, for me this primer although it has spf 20 pa2 plus is a very very standard average primer a lot of drugstores probably can give you same result or even better the cc cream absolutely a thumb up full name is airy tint watery cc cream uv vel spf 50 plus and pa4 plus is very very friendly for summertime uh, although it says watery cc cream in comparison with other cc cream this one has better coverage on my face it can easily build up to medium coverage and without looking cakey heavy or white in a way, what I experienced with BB cream or CC cream from other brands, especially on my face, once you apply it, it will become too white or it has odd gray undertone, especially in CC cream. But this one is literally like a foundation. It doesn't give you the odd finish. It doesn't give you the odd colors. Instead, this one does oxidize quite a bit. Just bear that in mind. My color is 02, uh, natural floral beige. This one, once it's oxidized, is literally sit into beige or slightly, slightly darker than beige. This one, because of its formulation, is very, very light cream. Therefore, it melts on your skin so well. It doesn't sink into the lines. It minimizes the pores about 60 to 70%. And another great thing about this is once this CC cream is set with the powders, this is set. Not like some foundations we use that is, especially surround my chin area most of the time. It's easily gets like a dry cakeness surround my chin, especially when you do you can easily see the problems. This one lasts on my face really, really long. Uh, although it's watery, it doesn't generate additional face oils. This one works better even than some of my foundations, I have to say. Oh, by the way, all the Joe Stewart's products has its scents. In some of the products, it smells a little bit stronger. Some of them are a little bit mild. Uh, for me, I quite enjoy the smell itself. Because once it's settled, it gives you a very um, flora, flora soap smell. When I mention soap, you may feel it cheap and cheerful. No, no, no. It's a very high class smell. Then move on to the setting powders. This particular item I debated with myself for the longest. Hence the delay of today's video. 
uh, because of its price line. Currently, in high-end or even luxury brand, setting powders, they all gone to very, very high standard and the level. You rarely would feel something surprise you. When the first time I use it, I feel overall is a very, very good powder, but I'm asking myself, does this actually worth its price? I have to say, overall performance of this powder, it reached to 98 out of 100 in my mind. Let me explain. First of all, the packaging is very like princessy, very attention to details. When you open it, the puff which come with is really, really good. It's so nice. This is very bouncy. It's thick enough, but very, very soft. And the detailed design of the like the filter sash itself in here. This perfectly stopped the powder flying all over the places because this powder is really, really creamy fine. And still to give you the efficiency when you want to grab the powder, all you need to do is tilt up and down, tap a little bit, and then twist it a couple of times, give you a very even spread out on the puff. The beauty of this powder, it ticks all the boxes what we wanted from a setting powder. One is to give a filtering finish, minimize the pores, right? This one, as soon as you touch it on the face, you still always see the smoothness this one can transfer your skin. Especially if you had a little bit challenge with your foundation early on. Somewhere you see a little bit of cakiness, unevenness. You put this powder on top, it's filtering out those things right away, give you a beautiful floor finish. Minimize the pores very well, regardless how many layers you pile up on your face, it still looks very light. It's very smooth, doesn't look cakey, doesn't look fake, or make your face become like powdery and put a mask on that type of finish. No, it's a very high class finish. Besides this, also long lasting. This too lasts on my face over eight hours, no problem. You guys know my favorite florist setting powders averagely on my face are around four to five hours. After four, five hours, will, there will be minor face oils in my T-zone. Over six hours will be surround my nose area. This two combo can last on my face for up to eight hours without touch up. You may see a tiny little bit of reflection on my T-zone, but it's just like you apply some highlighters on the T-zone, then that's it. You really no need to touch up at all. And nowadays, mask always in a bag somewhere you will need, especially in public transportation, for example. This powder, because it does have colors, therefore you will still see the powder color transferred onto your mask. But the amazing thing is, you don't see the impact on your face. Your makeup still look perfectly well, which is absolutely amazing. The more I use this powder, the more I love it. Again, only minor point, just FYI. It may not be even a point for some of you, depends on your skin color. My color is 01 natural. If I use the powder on its own, it's like quarter darker than my current skin tone, the shade itself. So especially if you are Asian or Chinese, for example, if you are expecting the setting powder to gently brightening up your makeup, uh, 01 natural certainly doesn't. And guys, my apology for any inconvenience caused with those, you know, small stickers over here and over here because the two areas my skin had very bad broken down. It's, I just cannot put any product on top of it. So I have to have stick on. Just sorry if it impact your watching experience. Do bear with me on this video. Next one is the eyeshadow palette. Where should I start? Mm. Packaging then. The packaging is not bad, but in comparison with the design of its setting powder, because it has combined the force of the finish with the reflection itself, it made it much more high class compared to this one. Even this one I say is come from brand, for example, like At Your House. You, you, you would still believe it could be, right? And the inside design, when I see on the website itself, I was like, oh my God, it's so cute. How lovely the design is. But when I receive it, 
uh, you guys probably don't see the details from the camera itself. When I open it, when I look at the powder itself, it just looks cheap and cheerful. Cheap and cheerful. It does not worth its price. Personally feel, okay? It has the mirror, come with the brush uh, for the price line itself. This brush? Really? Did you not see, you know, Tom Ford's brush, for example? And the most challenging part for me is the color design and the powder itself. I don't know whether you guys see, okay, it's, it's, it's drugstore standard from my perspective. It's just like drugstore, cheap and cheerful. <laughs> and they're all glitters in there. Four colors has glitters in there. It's not friendly for puffy eyes or single eyelid at all. And in this palette itself, there is no kind of shading colors to really help you define your eyes first and then to use those colors. For one palette with all those colors, like low saturate, similar tones, and the colorful shimmer eyeshadows with the glitters in there, all of them like this, it's not... A for me, it's not a good color combination, especially for the price line. Seriously, you can easily replace this type of palettes, even probably with better qualities from drugstores. And also the colors in the middle is supposed to be, when you touch it, it's like an eye cream, it's like a butter. And when you apply on the skin over here, it becomes like a powdery. It's supposed to use as a base, I guess, but to look at the color itself. It's creamy white base with like gold glitters on there. It will really make your eyes puffy. And today's eye look, you may feel that, oh, it looks not bad on your eyes. Yeah, I contoured heavily on my eyes first before use this palette. So I really, really wouldn't recommend their eyeshadow palette. Besides, this one does has so much fallout and so difficult to clean because there are so many glitters in there. Clean glitters are way much more difficult than just clean fallout eyeshadows or matte colors, okay? They are really not my cup of tea, let's put it that way. Then let's talk about the lip product. I got one item in each category. Uh, quickly talk about this. This one is quite nice. It's just a lip care product. Uh, what I like about it is the texture. It is lighter and more towards gel compared to standard lip balm. Standard lip balm, when you smudge it out, it become like a lighter oily feel. This one, when you smudge it out, is like you smudge a, uh, a jelly. It's still a little bit, you know, Sticky, you see? This really hydrates your lips. And most importantly, this does last longer. The hydration, it'll keep in your lip quite well. And remove the dead skin, this one is quite good as well. This little thing, uh, I really like this design. It's very cute. The bottom is frosted, like see-through plastic. And the top is very, very cute. My color is 02 Candy Tears. What I like the most is the actually applicator. One, the design is very cute. It's like a cat pose. And secondly, it's very, very friendly when you maneuver on your lips to draw out, to go over your lip lines. This is really good, surprisingly good. Because originally when I look at this shape, I'm like, oh, it's very easy to overdraw, like difficult to clean this and that. It's surprisingly easy to use. And the formulation of this one, because this one can use on the lip as well as cheek, is more like water cream. And once it's set, it goes to matte completely. This color, when you see the fresh color itself, when you still has the reflection, it looks like beautiful um, petal color itself, right? But once it's set on your lip, it become too gray. It has too strong gray undertone which made the color looks very odd on my skin tone. However, I do like this color to use as a blush. Today's blush, I only use this one. Use a puff or sponge, gently go over your cheek. It gives you a very beautiful, natural energy color itself. It doesn't look too gray and made it more towards like a purpley. So to use this on the cheek, I give it absolutely a thumb up. And the formulation is quite good. You can use before the powder as well as after the powder. I would suggest to 
grab the product out, swipe on your hand, and then use the puff. Do like this. Don't just dip the applicator on your face and uh, smudge it out. Uh, at least that on my face, it did remove some of the foundations. So in summary, the formulation, thumb up. The color, zero two, not on the lip, but on the cheek. Then move on the cream lipstick. The design is okay. I think why I'm saying that is I feel the pictures on the website looks better than the actual product. I think that's where my minor disappointment come from. This one also has a small mirror on top. Inside my color is uh, hang on one two four. The color is like a coral milky tea color. It has a creamy wet finish. The reflection is more glowy or glossy finish than a typical cream finish. Uh, the color is average. The formulation is average. The overall performance is average. So I would say this cream lipstick, if you have a budget and you like the design itself, by all means, but you, you easily find the color designs, the formulations, and probably your preferred packaging designs from drugstores or similar price lines. So it's not bad, but nothing special. Then come to the last lip product cover itself. It was very hyper when it was just launched. And when you open, it's like a little mirror, very handy in the way, but it's very bulky though overall, see? Uh, you can choose different colors. I just chose a standard pink one. Again, it looks way much more luxury on the picture than the actual product. And you buy the lipstick separately. My color is 05. It's this one. Uh, this is a typical like a uh, cream lipstick. Uh, the color itself is more like toffee, coffee, chocolatey color. From the formulation itself, it's not bad. It's creamy, very easy to glide on the lip. Today I used this one. It's very easy to be glide on the lip. It's a full pigment straight away. It lasts fairly long, like now. Uh, ignore this, but. I've been sitting here and talking for just over two hours. So as a cream lip product, it's not bad at all. But again, back to the point that it's not bad, but again, nothing special. To pay the two prices separately, I can easily find better ones from drugstore. We nearly to the end. Just a couple of two things. This it come as a sample as well, which is the makeup removal. Again, it's typical like oil on the top and the water at the bottom. You need to shake it before you use it. Uh, I use the ones, again, it's average. There is nothing special. Uh, compare this with the Maybelline's one. I would go for Maybelline's one. Maybelline's one is more efficient than this. Lastly, the perfumed hand cream. I say no, it's because I really don't feel you need to spend this money for this hand cream. Uh, the hand cream itself is very, very standard, very strong smell. As it says, perfume. So if you feel it's too strong scents, you definitely won't like this. And the hand cream itself, the biggest challenge is, is remain the the creamy wetness on your hand, you feel it doesn't absorb completely. When you touch your screens, when you need to do something else, you may feel a little bit slippery or it has the finger marks goes everywhere. If they give you as a sample, then have it. If not, then, you know, think about it. Okay, we're now at the end of today's video. <laughs> I'm very intrigued to know what's your favorite Jura Stewart items. Let's have a discussion. Leave your comments down below. Always lovely to see them. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you on my next video.